Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the 8 o'clock service of Word for the World Christian Fellowship. Once again, we encourage you to please send us your prayer requests. And uh, again, we promise that we will pray with you. And uh, send us your answered prayers. You know, th this uh, answered prayers will be an encouragement and our testimony that our God is faithful and true. So please uh, send them. Uh, don't be shy. <laughs> Just keep on sending your prayer requests and your answer prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, as we go into our word this morning, I would like to refresh our memories. Uh, two Sundays ago, Pastor Jason talked about true riches. Uh, and he also touched about greed, you know, where that man in the story of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, just kept on filling up his barn. And when, when his barn was filled, he even tore it down and then built another one, a bigger one, so that he can store more grains. And, you know, uh, when he filled it up, he just uh, said, you know, today I stop. You know, I'll just eat, drink, and be merry. So you see, God said, no, today your life will be demanded of you. And what happens? Was he able to enjoy what he stored? Was he able to to, to use whatever he stored? No. Nah. Because God was reminding his disciples then and the, and the Jewish people that, you know, uh, these are not the true riches that you and I should be uh, pursuing. You know, this is greed that captivated the heart of one person. And again, greed you know, it's a matter of the heart. And in the same manner, Brother Brian last Sunday talked about kingdom living uh, dispels uh, fear and worries. It is the same. It is a question of our heart's position, our heart's condition. It is a matter of heart, our hearts, you know. When you talk about fear and you talk about worries, you talk about greed, you know. It is a condition of our hearts. And today, I would like to to stick to that line of teaching that uh, the Lord is leading us to, you know, um, that uh, it is our heart's condition, really, our hearts uh, and our heart's position, especially when we start seeking our God, you know, uh, all these uh, all these uh, stories that the Lord made, you know, about do not worry, uh, about the true riches you know uh, this is all about the condition of our hearts and how we seek the lord and how we would like to find and see the lord jesus christ in our lives you know and uh today i just want to i want you to join me as uh we read a popular verse and we all know this because it's found in matthew 6 uh verse 33 but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. And again, we ask, Lord God, that your spirit, Lord, just take hold of us right now. Speak to our hearts, Lord God. Let your words be a double-edged sword, Lord, that will pierce our heart, and that, Father, it will encourage us to do more and more for you and your kingdom. Father, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Our title for today is, And His Righteousness. Why? Because whenever we we are asked about Matthew 6.33, it, 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 it is always easy for us to remember, you know, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, then all these things shall be added unto you. That is how we see this verse only. You know, I, I, and of course, seeking God's kingdom is important as it is. But you see, if we neglect this part, seeking His righteousness, I think we will not be able to to seek God's kingdom uh, completely. Why? Uh, what it is? Uh, what what's uh, seeking uh, God's kingdom all about? It says in. Uh, Romans uh, chapter 14, verse 17, 
says, for the kingdom, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It is not about uh, God's uh, righteousness or God's kingdom. It's about the righteousness, His righteousness. And you see, we have to understand that when the Lord Jesus Christ came, He became now our righteousness to God because we were not, we were not able to stand before the Lord because no one will ever be right before God because of our sins. And that is why He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who became our righteousness in this world so that we now, when we, uh, accept the Lord Jesus Christ when we when we live for the Lord Jesus Christ we come to our Father in heaven we know that we will that he will listen and he will uh, he, he will listen to our prayers because of the righteousness our righteousness is not the things that we do it's not about it's not about the good things that you've done it's not about the good works the re that is nothing it has nothing to do with the righteousness that God is talking about. The righteousness that the Lord is speaking about is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he's saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know, when we seek the kingdom of God, you talk about your prayer time. You talk about serving in church, you know, praise and worship. You talk about uh, helping the poor. Uh, fellowshipping, gathering, encouraging one another. These are ways to seek the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, if we seek only the, the kingdom and not the righteousness of God, it will not, there, it will not be uh, valuable in heaven because the reason why we are able you know, to seek God's kingdom and to, to be uh, uh, hoping that we will be in God's kingdom when we all uh, when we all die, you know, it's because of that righteousness that God has sent His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. To seek God's righteousness is normally port portrayed as if we were not dedicated or holy enough. Wherefore we must try to perform better you know what the, what the, what the, 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 the scholars were saying is that the reason why we were told you know uh, to seek uh, God's righteousness is because we are not doing or we are not holy enough or you are not righteous enough whatever you are doing you have to do more and more and more and that is what happened in the Old Testament, you know, when uh, uh, Moses was, uh, the Lord God gave the law to Mos Moses so that Moses instructed the Israelites, you know. But again, uh, no, no one can follow those uh, Ten Commandments, really. Uh, it was proven, and that is why God has sent His only begotten Son, His righteousness, uh, to this world. Now, uh, he was also telling uh, the the Israelites and the Jews at that time, you know, that was listening to him. Um, stop relying on your on the law, you know, in your obedience to to the law. Stop relying on the on, on, on thinking that if we follow the law, then we will we will be good. We, that will be seeking the righteousness, or, or that will be the source of our righteousness. No. Jesus in the New Testament was saying enough of being obedient to the law because actually no one is following the law, you know, not even the Pharisees at that time because they had their own thinking, they have their own laws, you know, 2,000 laws. How can you follow 2,000 laws really, you know, in, in your lifetime, <laughs> you know? Um, I remember in, in school, uh, a subject for 45 minutes and the law was just don't be noisy, don't be rowdy, don't 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 uh, don't exchange uh, stories with your your seatmate, and still we find that hard 
to obey, right? So what more about these 2,000 laws or what about the, the, the laws that Moses gave to the Israelites at that time? And that is what Jesus was saying. You know, enough is enough. Uh, you cannot uh, be obedient to the law and make it your source of righteousness because it will never pass as righteous in the eyes of our God because no matter what you do, you are still a sinner. And that is the truth. And that is why He sent His only begotten Son to be our righteousness before God. And that is why when uh, the Lord uh, uh, died on that cross and His uh, and, and and his body was uh, resurrected in in heaven you know um he became now our righteousness before god the father so that whatever we pray for you know when we ask the lord when when we speak to our god it passes through our lord jesus christ hallelujah and our god in heaven hears our prayer and and just like us you know God is saying, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to us today, stop about, stop thinking about your good works. Your good works are not your righteousness. No. These are only results of our, uh, uh, of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Your relationship, your, your, your righteousness uh, should not be, <clears throat> should not, excuse me, should not be uh, should not be uh, centered or focused on our good works, you know. During the Israelite time, they uh, Jesus was telling them enough, obe being obedient to the law because you are not really obedient to the law. Now enough, God, our Lord Jesus Christ is telling you today, enough of making your good works as your righteousness because your good works, it's not really good. Why? Because, admit it or not, every good work that we do, we always think of something that will benefit us after. Whether you admit that or not, you see. But again, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us enough of that. Righteousness is not about our own good works. It's about us having been made righteous before God, hallelujah, by grace through faith. In our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what I've been saying. Righteousness is because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are saved through grace. This is what our righteousness should be all about. And that is why when we talk about Matthew 6.33. Seeking the kingdom of God goes hand in hand. He's seeking his righteousness. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now. Uh, look at this um, the result of seeking God's righteousness is living a life pleasing to the Lord Almighty <laughs> living a life pleasing to the Lord Almighty again seeking his kingdom prayer, you know, going to church uh, serving in, in the church helping poor people, you know, fellowshipping. These are all good things, you know. These are all good works, again, that if you look at it, really goes to the point of seeking God's kingdom. But all these, without God's righteousness, is nothing. No matter how much time you spend in church, no matter how many poor people you've helped, no matter how many ministries you, you are in, in, in in the church, it doesn't count anything if you do not have His righteousness. Therefore, it will not be a life pleasing to the Lord. So, uh, how do we live a life pleasing to God. If you have your papers, please, ball pens and papers, write this down. Uh, this is the first. Uh, it, it's our faith, of course. Our faith in uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, 
and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Hebrews 6 tells us that it is impossible to please God with faith, without faith. Now, it is impossible or God cannot be pleased if a person does not have faith or confidence in Him, who doubts the truth, who doubts that, uh, that our Lord uh, really exists and that the Lord can really carry you through. You know? and, and that is why, again, let me go back to <laughs> searching the kingdom. You can pray, you can praise and worship the whole day in church, you can uh, serve in 12 uh, ministries in your church, you can uh, help a thousand poor people, but without the belief that God exists and that He is true and faithful to His words, and He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, all those works are dead works. I'm sorry to say but it is dead works. He cannot be pleased because um, if you do not believe that His ways are right, that He is qualified to be the Lord of your life, if you cannot believe this, brothers and sisters, then, I am sorry, we will not be able to please our God. Remember this, the requirement of faith or confidence in, in God is not arbitrary. It is a must. We cannot or we should not even be discussing this if whether you should have faith or not or we, your faith should be should be in Jesus Christ or in God the Father. No. The requirement of our faith or confidence in God is not arbitrary. Okay? It is fixed. It should be in the Lord Jesus Christ because those that believe that the Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth to save you and me. That is the confidence or that is our faith in God that He has sent His righteousness to us. Without faith, we will not be doing things that is pleasing to God. Like what I said, uh, no duties in church, no prayer time, no praise and worship, uh, nor music, nor, nor any good works for that matter, will be pleasing in the sight of our Lord God Almighty when we do not have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. When we come to Jesus, we must believe that He is our Lord and Savior. And that is why Jesus was saying, you know, when you search the kingdom of God, you have to search also His righteousness. In other words, He was telling the, the, the Israelites, he, he was telling his disciples, Search me. Sabi ng Panginoong Jesus. Why? Because without me, it is impossible to please my Father in heaven. That is what he was saying. Remember. Remember this. The, oh, sorry. The object of our faith is both the existence and the divine government of God in our lives. Okay? The object of our faith should be in both. Hindi pwede po isa lang. It should be both in the existence of our God and the divine government of God in our lives. Meaning, if you if you com if you com uh, combine the, the existence and divine government means that Jesus should be our Lord and Savior of our lives. That is the object of our faith. That is why uh, the Bible says in Romans, is in uh, in uh, Hebrews eleven. Sorry, it says that it is impossible to please God without faith. Why? Because faith, the object of our faith is the existence of Jesus Christ in our lives, okay? And His divine government, meaning He will be the one to be governing your life, what you should think, what you should do, 
what you should feel it is the divine government of God in our lives and his existence in our lives that is the object of yours and mine faith so without faith it is impossible to please the Lord to please God so remember when we seek his kingdom we should seek his righteousness when we seek his righteousness the result should be a life pleasing to God and for us to please the Lord number one faith the object of our faith is the existence of Jesus Christ and his divine government in our lives number two fruit of the Spirit we all know that in Galatians 5 22 to 23 but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace forbearance or patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law brothers and sisters Galatians 5 tells us the fruit of the Spirit it means one fruit okay one fruit which is which has love which has joy, which has peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Nine attributes in one fruit. This is what God is telling us, you know. You want, uh, you want to seek His righteousness. You want to seek His kingdom and His righteousness. Live a life pleasing to God. Now, for us to live a, a life pleasing to God, we must have faith. Because it's impossible to please God without faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the object of our faith, that He exists and He governs our lives. Now, the result of such faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is not nine fruits. It is one fruit with nine attributes, which is joy, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the kind of fruit that we must be uh, that we must be uh, yielding, you know, in this uh, unbelieving world, so that we will be uh, living a life pleasing to our Lord God Almighty. Now. This is kind of difficult to ask, you know. Let me be true to you. Um, we declare that we are Christians. We also know that a lot of people hate us. My question, to those that hate you, have we learned to love that person? Now, if you talk about love, there are a lot of uh, branches, you know, what kind of love and the love that we are talking about here is the love that the Lord Jesus Christ shared to you. We say that we, we were unlovable, but still, our Lord Jesus Christ loved you. So th these people that... Uh, we know hate us or is uh, angry at us, mad at us. Do you love them? Have you learned to love them? How many years have you been a Christian? All your life? Five years now? Two years now? It really doesn't matter how long. But again, if you want to live a life pleasing to God, and as a result of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the fruit of the Spirit, which is one attribute, is love. We must have learned to love already. Because by now we know that our God loved us even the time when we were unlovable. So have you loved them? And in by loving them, do you feel that joy? 
we feel that joy by loving, you know, these people who are who are who who who, who is angry at us, who who hates us, or who doesn't really want to do anything about us. In loving them, do we find joy? Do you have peace? Do you have peace even when that person talks things uh, bad about you? Do you have that peace? Even if they continue to talk, you know, behind your back, even if they continue to give that chismis about you, what kind of a person you are, who you really are, you know, all those things, you still have peace, do you? Will you be patient enough? Or have you learned to be patient enough to wait on the moving of the Holy Spirit for that person to change, for that person to be touched by the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you patiently waiting? Or are you just asking the Lord, Lord, you know, take this person Are we wait, are, uh, have we learned to be patient enough to wait in the moving of our Lord Jesus Christ? When, when you see this person on the street, you know, will we still be kind enough? You know, will we, is, will we you be kind enough? Have we learned to be kind enough to greet that person? Knowing that he doesn't like you, knowing that he hates you. Have we learned to be kind enough just even to say hi? or good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening to that person. When that person needs help, <laughs> have we learned to show goodness and extend that helping hand? Again, like the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when we were in need, in, 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 in our darkest time, He extended that arm, that hand, all we had to do was just hold on to that arm of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did the pulling. He pulled you and me out of that darkened time. He pulled you, you and me out of that mighty clay and placed you where you are right now. So have we learned, really, if that person that doesn't like us, that person who hates us, Probably hate is a strong word, but that's the reality that's happening in this world. Are you willing or have you learned to show goodness by helping him? Have you learned to faithfully pray for that person? You see, if we are waiting patiently for God to move in his life, we have to faithfully pray to our Lord Jesus Christ that He allows His Holy Spirit to touch that person to renew Him, to restore Him, to save Him. Have we learned faithfully to pray? When we see them, when we see these people, are we gentle enough with our words? When we speak to that person, knowing that they don't like us, knowing that they, they have a grudge against us or they hate us, when we speak to them, have we learned to be gentle enough to speak the words of God in their lives? If this person is aggressive towards you, have we learned? To exercise self-control. Brothers, sisters, brothers and sisters. These are the things that we have to be answerable to our Lord. You know, these are our actions. These are the things that uh, we face every day. But you see... Having love and having joy and having peace and having patience and kindness, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. These are all the results, brothers and sisters, of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Seeking first God's kingdom and His righteousness is not mainly about our actions or having to perform a bunch of good works. Brothers and sisters, it's about God moving in your life, how God has changed your your heart to love that person. That in, in, in loving them, you know, the Lord has, has placed that peace in your heart and that joy, you know, in, in loving that person. Even in patiently waiting for that person to be renewed by God. That is all the result of God touching and renewing our hearts. Because when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, the fruit of the Spirit is a result. And it's an applica uh, application that we do in our lives that pleases the Lord God Almighty. And therefore, it is a heart matter. It, it's a matter of the heart. It is a lifestyle of being rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, our righteousness and walking in peace and joy before Him. It is not about us. It's the condition of our hearts. It is a lifestyle, brothers and sisters. We must remember, you know, when we want to live a life pleasing to our God, it is a lifestyle that should be rooted in our hearts, grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ as our righteousness. Because when we walk in peace and joy before Him, His righteousness should be founded and grounded in our hearts. Because without His righteousness, I tell you, there will be no peace and there will be no joy. No matter what we do, no matter what, whatever we acquire, there will be nothing that, will con be, that we, you and I will not be contented. It is His righteousness, righteousness that fills us. When we seek Him with all our hearts, we will find Him and He will reward us for seeking Him earnestly. Jesus will take green out of us and fill us with true riches. Not the riches that uh, that that uh, the, the rich man was trying to store in his barn, but the true riches which are found in heaven. He will dispel fears and worries, for he will fill us with contentment in our hearts, and therefore there will be peace and joy in walking with our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when we seek him with all our hearts, when we seek his kingdom, when we seek His righteousness, our God will reward us. And that is why it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And what does all these things mean? You mean everything? You have to go to, uh, to the verses. You know? It says about, do not worry about what? your food, do not worry about what you should eat or drink, do not worry about your, your, your dress, do not worry about your body, do not worry about do not worry about anything do not worry even about tomorrow, because tomorrow has uh, a lot of uh, worries to bring to you and me you know, uh, when we seek our God all these things shall be added whatever you need, in your body your health, your physical body Whatever we need uh, with the food, physical food, your spiritual food, you know, and whatever, whatever uh, uh, our, our 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 clothes, you know, to be clothed with the the, the clothes that we should wear, and we should we should not be, we should not matter. It, it we should not be worried about this one. What we should worry is that we are seeking His kingdom and His righteousness. Remember, it goes together, hand in hand. To seek His kingdom and His righteousness. So that all these things, the Lord knows what we need. 
The Lord knows what you need. The Lord knows the, your, your troubles. The Lord knows your struggles. The Lord knows what's going on in your life. All we have to do is that you and I should seek His kingdom and His righteousness. Let the Lord take out that greed and fill us with the true riches. Riches that are found in heavenward. With His righteousness, He will dispel fears and worries because our God will fill our hearts with contentment. Our God will make sure that you and I are filled with His Spirit, with His love, with His joy, so that you and I can say, We seek ye first the kingdom of our God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to us. Father, we just thank you for your word this morning, and again, I pray, Lord God, that uh, we may seek your kingdom, Lord God, and your righteousness. And Father, let our, our lives be, a, as a result, be a pleasing sacrifice to thee, O God. Lord God, let our faith dictate, Lord God, uh, the life that we will take. And therefore, our, our hearts, Lord God, will just uh, yield, Lord God, the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the peace, the joy, the patience, Lord God, the goodness, the kindness, uh, the faithfulness, the self-control, Lord. Let it be natural, Lord God, in this uh, life pleasing to you, Lord God, that as we live this kind of life, Lord, it will bring glory and honor to your name, O God, that it will, it will just uh, magnify your life, Lord God, in ours, and let your spirit just continue to strengthen our faith, continue to strengthen, Lord God, our walk with you. Father, we thank you for this time, and I pray for those, Lord God, that you have touched today, continue to speak to their hearts, Lord. If they need to accept you, Lord, allow them to, to understand the meaning of accepting you, Lord God, and, and seeking not only your kingdom, but you, our righteousness that our Heavenly Father has given. Father, that they will know and that they will understand that it is only through you, as you have said in, in your word, Lord God, you are the way, Jesus, you are the truth, Lord and you are the life that we need, Lord God, in this earth. Father, continue to speak to them, Lord God, right now. Touch our hearts, Lord God. Touch it, Father, and, and, and take hold of our hearts today. As you speak to them, I pray that they will accept you as, your, as their personal Lord and Savior, Lord God. And that they will, Father, live the fruit of the Spirit. Yield it, Lord God, to this world so that the world will know, this unbelieving world, Lord God, will know that our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is our Savior, our faithful, loving Father. Father, we thank you. And again, be blessed and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I hope uh, we have encouraged you. Uh, continue to seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, remember, and that we live a life pleasing to our Lord God Almighty. As we go, let us pray for the benediction. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, for this time that you have spoken to us. And again, let your Holy Spirit protect uh, our, our, our brethren, Lord God, uh, from the schemes of the enemy. Father, let your, your blood cover each and every one from this virus, Lord God, and that, Father, your love, your presence in our lives, Lord God, will give us the strength to continue every day in our lives, O God. In the name of the Father, and the love of the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit be upon you. Go and be a blessing as you have been blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. God bless you all.